mm, there has been broad-based support to send military gear. We have sent so much since the start of the war. Uh, of course, there is this debate uh, going on on tanks. And here the issue is that this would be a next step in the, in the fight. It might be necessary, but I do understand the Germans and others are saying that you need a broad coalition. A hugely significant meeting of Ukraine's allies is set to take place tomorrow as the war-torn country makes a plea for tanks to help it regain territory from the Russians. The request for the German-built tanks has become a sticking point, though, among allies. Should they put pressure on Germany to approve Ukraine's request for those tanks? Or is there legitimate concern over escalating the conflict with Russia? Let's bring in retired General Rick Hillier, the former chief of defense staff. He's now the chair of the Strategic Advisory Council for the Ukrainian World Congress. Hi, General Hillier. Great to see you. Thank you for making the time. Bashi, my pleasure. I appreciate it. Um, look, before we get into the politics of this decision, can I ask you in, in layman's terms to help myself and, and our, uh, our audience understand, what do these tanks do? How would they give Ukraine an advantage? Why does Ukraine want them so much? Well, Ukraine has got a war to win, a war of survival for their very families, their nation. And there are about five or six things that you absolutely must have to win that war. One, you must have air defense to keep the, the, the Russian fighters and, and drones off you. Two, you must have long range artillery and, and precision artillery to reach those deep targets. And third, you must have the kind of vehicles that can close with and destroy the Russians when they advance or when you are trying to take back the territory and those vehicles have got to be capable of, of doing that kind of advance under direct fire from the Russians, under artillery fire, still surviving and winning the fight. And, and the Soviet era tanks and fighting vehicles that the Ukrainians have for the most part simply are not up to that task. They cannot mount the kind of offensive operations that they need to to take the rest of their country back to defeat the Russians, drive them out of Ukraine. And the Leopard 2 tanks, so would the M1 and the Challenger 2, along with Bradley fighting vehicles or the Martyr, which is a German fighting vehicle, or the CV-90, the Swedish vehicle, would allow them to do that. They're well protected. Their mobility is incredible. Their firepower is, is awesome. And their, their technology and, and ability to survive and to kill the enemy on the battlefield is incredible. The Leopard 2 stands above all of the other in the ability to do that. That's why Ukraine needs it to win this war. So, so Germany uh, makes these, manufactures these, and in effect, they have a veto of sorts over countries who, which may be willing to export them to Ukraine. And that's where this big meeting is, is focused on tomorrow, to essentially uh, see what Germany decides. Are you surprised at all at their hesitancy, given uh, the way the last 11 months has unfolded and the willingness that allies in general have shown to supply Ukraine with the military aid it needs? Uh, Vashi, I've been surprised that no other country has stepped up and provided tanks to Ukraine up till now. I've not been as surprised about Germany. Somebody said to me some years ago, just a few years ago, that we spent 75 years trying to make sure that Germany would never go to war again without a tight coalition of allies around it, and we've succeeded. So we should not be surprised that Germany is reluctant, uh, is reticent to provide tanks unless it's part of that tight coalition. And I think that's what we heard the German leaders say. They're probably getting close to a decision to provide those Leopard tanks. They only want to do it as part of a coalition. I actually do believe that's why the Brits have announced that they're going to send a squadron of Challenger tanks to kind of break that log jam. And I do think there will be pressure, how much, I don't know, obviously, at the meeting at Ramstein tomorrow of the NATO supplying, thing, uh, supplying equipment to Ukraine. And I do think we're getting close, but Germany is reluctant and they do have the right of refusal of sending that Leopard tank it's because of end user certificate and which any weapon system will have. So I think there's pressure. I think Germany is getting close to the decision, but it's not a done deed yet. If they do give the go ahead, Canada, my understanding is, has 112 of them in use. Uh, do you think Canada should be sending some to Ukraine? Actually, I've been saying for a year now, and perhaps a little tiny bit more that I thought Canada should have uh, pulled 50 of the main battle tanks out of its fleet, uh, put together a spare parts package and ammunition package and done the same with our Lab 3 fighting vehicles and given, you know, I've done about 300 of those Lab 3 fighting vehicles and given Ukraine a, an armored package that is modern and capable of doing what they need it to do. So I'd love to see Canada take 50 Leopard 2 tanks. They're the finest battle tank in the world. They can help Ukraine win this war, and we could be a part of supporting them in doing that. I'd love to see it.
and then replace them right away with a with a new tank produced it you know produced by leopard by germany again because it is the best battle tank in the world okay general hellier really appreciate your insights this evening thanks for making the time actually my pleasure thank you